Amen. Amen. Right there where you are this morning, I'd like you to pick any song of praises in your mouth and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. The one who is more than sufficient, sing a song to the glory of the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Alpha Omega Beside you There is no other There is no other God Alpha Omega Omega Beside you there is no other, there is no other God. Alpha, Alpha, Omega, Omega, beside you. There is no other, there is no other God. Alpha, Alpha, Omega You are the awesome God The mighty God I will praise your name You are the awesome God The mighty God I will praise your name Jehovah I will praise your name, Gio. You are the awesome God. You are the awesome God. My mighty Lord. Praise your name. You are the awesome God. My mighty God. I will praise your name, Gio. 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 And we praise your name, You are the awesome God. You are the awesome God. We praise your name. You are the awesome God. A mighty God. I we praise your name. You are the awesome Praise your name, Jehovah. Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we thank you for your grace, your love, and your might. We thank you for this prayer and program. We thank you for those that you have brought here by your power. We thank you because your word says... Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Father, we thank you. For your power is absolute power. I have never failed your people. Father, thank you for those that were brought here today. We give you praise, O Lord. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you because your power is the power that defeated Goliath. Your power was a central air conditioner inside the fiery furnace of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Your power is the power that stopped the lion's mouth and they could not touch Daniel. Your power is the power that defeated Herod and sank Pharaoh in the Red Sea. That power, we thank you because it is still the same. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And therefore this morning, I'm specially praying for those who are being pursued by any form of strong man. All who have been pursued by domestic witchcraft. All who have been pursued by answered witchcraft. All who have been pursued by envious witchcraft. All who have been pursued by envious work colleagues. All who have been pursued by those who just don't want to see them around. 
Father, right now here in this place, for such people who are in this meeting today, let your power arise and fight for them. Receive divine assistance. 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 In the name of Jesus. Something is going to happen to 10 people just now. The power of God will strike them where they are. Father, I'm praying for these 10 people. That the power that removes them from the mind of their helpers. Let the power of God strike that power away. In the name of Jesus. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. And that's number ten. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let the spirit of uncommon favor fall upon your children here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All those who have been chained in the spirit realm, chained by marine powers, chained by covens, chained by fetish powers, wherever such people are, by the power in the blood of Jesus, be set free now. Be set free. 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 In the name of Jesus. I someone here some time ago an evil bird was sent to you. The bird gained entrance into your house and did a lot of havoc. That's which the bird was sent to do, which is already in your body. Right there where you are. The power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of the witchcraft bird is broken completely. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Continue, O oh Lord, to lay your hands upon us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Before we go into our next prayer session, at this particular edition of prayer, let's take our Bibles as we open to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3. While I speak for a few minutes on what I call the unusual God. The unusual God. After a few minutes, you will now begin to call upon that unusual God. So that they can do unusual things in your life. I know there is somebody here that something is going to happen in your life today that will shock your friends and surprise your enemies. In First Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. First Timothy three sixteen. Are we there? And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. I read it one more time. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory without controversy. In Jeremiah now, chapter 32, Jeremiah 32, 
verse 17. Jeremiah 32, 17. Our Lord God, be all that has made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out hand and there is nothing too hard for thee. The unusual God. When we say unusual, what do you mean? We mean exceptional, remarkable, deviating from the normal, peculiar, strange, different from all others, and unique. I have a word for somebody here. God is going to do the unusual in your life. And those unusual situations and troubles and circumstances, they shall collide with the unusual God. And there will be unusual solution. So what I'm saying is that those unusual situations will also bring forth unusual testimonies. And that's why we're here today. To call on that power. That's one problem. One problem. A strange problem indeed. The strange problem is that many people come to God, but they limit him in their mind. Many people come to God with a mindset that there are certain things that there is nothing anybody can do about it. Just continue with it. There are so many situations that will have turned all the way around. If we can just have that faith that the Bible says is like the grain of the mustard seed. The kind of faith you need to move the hand of the unusual God. It's not that big giant faith. The kind of faith that you had when you came to this meeting today. And you sat on your seat. And you believe that that seat will not collapse under you. And you sat down confidently. That's all. You don't need more than that. As small as a grain of mustard seed. The mustard seed is so small. That if you are looking at it and you breathe too violently. It will fly away from your hand. But as tiny as they are, they are strong. We need to get back to traditional ancient faith in God. Those who want to see unusual testimonies, unusual miracles, they must have that faith that God can do the impossible. The Bible says, with man, this is impossible. So, but with God, all things are possible. There is no situation that can push God down. There is no enemy that can defeat God. In the dictionary of the Almighty, the word impossibility does not exist. And there is no distance God cannot go to rescue signs and wonders for his children. Your Goliath may be boasting for days and years. The moment required for divine David to deal with him may just be a few seconds. I see somebody here today. The Goliath that is boasting against your life before we finish this meeting shall be buried alive. Shall be buried alive. Shall be buried alive. Shall be buried alive. In the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud and clear. Our level of faith decides so much, so many things for us. That's why in many instances in scripture, you see Jesus saying, thy faith, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith, thy faith. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he that cometh to God will believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How many people here today are believing that the unusual God will do the unusual in their lives? Are you sure? Then let me hear you shout it loud, amen. <laughs> it was at 777, that program that we heard at Press City here. 777. A brother dragged his father here who was a Muslim. The father had been blind for years. Dragged the man to 777. And you know that meeting, those, those, those of you were here, that the enemy arranged terrible traffic and all kinds of things that day. When we closed the service, there was practically no vehicle to move people down to Lagos. So this man was held by his son and they were going away. He had given the man water to drink. He had applied the oil on his eyes. 
And Baba was saying, I cannot see, I cannot see. And they were going all the way, they were going, they were walking back to Lagos. They walked all the way to Baga, to stop here. Then the boy looked back. I said, Daddy, huh? Hey, no transport. So many people are walking behind us. And the old man said, really? So many people are walking behind us. And the old man turned his head back. All of a sudden, he shouted, I can see them! I can see them! I can see them! He left this place. Got to Baga. There was nobody there saying, receive your son, receive your son. But the unusual God was there. As he turned to look, the eyes popped open. The power of the unusual God. I know a couple. Father, professor. Mother, professor. They had one son. This boy was a celebrated dunce. They employ specialists, educationists, educationists, uh, teachers for the boy. The boy kept failing. When there are 30 people in the class, his position is number 30. There was a time they added six more people to the class. The class became 36, really number. The boy moved down to 36 until they came to a meeting like this. And I was a word of knowledge that the Lord is delivering the brain of somebody. And they went to him. They said, Amen. By the next examination, this boy moved from 36 or so to one. Amen. It was so bad, the teachers refused to believe. So they had to set another exam for him and lock him up in the room. He even did better. I see somebody here this morning. The unusual God will arise for you. It 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 will arise for you. In the name of Jesus. That brother may be here because he doesn't miss prayer. Maybe he's here today. It was a factory. A chemical factory in Nigeria. He was a foreman. He had a supervisor ahead of him. He had managing director ahead of him. So he was number three on the line. When he tells me, please, sir, I want to go to Monday Bible study. They say, no, you can't go to Monday Bible study. Church, 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 church. Sit down here. Walk. Where is the service? No, you can't come. Sit down here. Walk. And the brother has been praying. This kind of job is this. This job is not allowing me to serve the Lord. I want my freedom. I said, God is in the business of doing the unusual. One day, the white man who was the owner of the factory came to Nigeria. Just came to visit the factory. So they were conducting the man around the old factory. Then they got to a place in the factory that was a problem. There was a reaction on certain things. And the white man looked at what was happening there. Turned to the managing director. So this thing that is happening here, what name is it called? What is this one in chemistry? Then they said, no idea. Turn to the supervisor. Said, what, what do you, what's, what's happening here? Can you explain it scientifically? The supervisor said, no idea, sir. Then he turned to our brother, foreman. The brother said, as that hand of the white man was coming towards him, he said something like cold water poured on his head. That he just found that he opened his mouth. He didn't know what he was saying. He was talking. And the man was shaking his head. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. So they left. They got another place in the factory. There was another problem again. The white man said, what's this again? Turned to the MD. Said, no idea. Supervisor. No idea. The brother says, the hand was coming again. The same cold feeling that he felt before came upon him. He opened his mouth and began to talk again. He said what he was saying, like he was, like he was, like he was speaking in tongues, but the man was saying, yes. Yes, that's correct. So they finished. When they got to the office, the white man said, who are you? Say, I'm the former. This was so you, the M- MD. So you guys don't seem to know anything. This man knows what is happening here. So you know what? You former, take over as MD. That was a, a brother who went to work on the Wednesday. Taking a motorbike or car to work. Came back home driving a car and with promotion. When he woke up that morning, he did not know that he was coming back a different person. There is somebody here. By the time you depart from this campground, you will be an unusual testimony. Let your amen be loud and clear. (laughs) 
Why? Because God is a spirit. God is the father of spirits. And behind every situation, behind every problem, there is a spiritual force. All problems of men, one way or the other, has its origin in the spiritual realm. So God is the father of spirits. So he is able to control situation from the spirit realm. God is the father of the spirit. Three people gathered themselves one day to come and drop pots of sacrifices at the house of a man of God. Three people. They had different terrible things inside the pot. They brought them there at night. Meanwhile, the man of God was sleeping. He had no idea what was happening outside. As these three people brought the pots of sacrifice, according to their own testimony, a man in white garment appeared and said, Who sent you? They mentioned the name of the native doctor. It's okay. Say, I am from above. You have overstepped your boundaries. I will have killed you now. But if I kill you here, they will put my son in trouble. Therefore, I will not do that. Now go to that bush over there. You cut sticks and come back here. And they went. Cut sticks. So now, begin to beat each other. What the man of God had in that side, I was, yeah, 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 yeah. That was what he was hearing. And he came out. And these people beating themselves seriously. But their pots were on the floor, the pots of sacrifice. The man of God tried to stop them, he could not. They pray, Father, help me. What kind of thing is this? They were, blood was coming out of their body. They were still beating themselves. I see somebody here. Your enemies shall fight it out among themselves. They shall fight it out. They shall fight it out. They shall fight it out. In the name of Jesus. The man said, ah, we came to drop sacrifice here. And one man in white garment appeared and said, we start we have beating each other. We want to serve your God. We want to serve your God. Why? Because God is a spirit. He is a father of spirits. No matter what spiritual force they are marshalling against you. The father of spirits can get there and command everything they put together to be null and void. He is the only one of Israel. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the unusual God that gives dreams and visions. He is the God of angelic visitations. He is the God who covered the dry land with sea in the days of Noah. He got angry in the day of Noah. He opened the tap from heaven, he opened the tap below. He commanded the sea to come to land in the days of Noah. He is the same person who removed the sea and made dry land a deliverance in the days of Moses. The unusual God. The unusual God. I still cannot forget the testimony of that sister. She joined us at Old Jabba Road when MFM newly started. She was a prostitute. Why she was prostituting? Prostitute? She noticed she was having pain in her womb. By the time she got to the doctor, the doctor said it's cancer of the womb. So in a seven hour operation, and they showed it to her, she took a picture. She started coming. And she made up her mind that she wasn't going to marry anybody so that nobody would know the secret. She was coming to church, coming to church. When the one brother went to her and said, hello man, God said you are my wife. The woman did not answer him at all. And the brother kept bothering her, kept bothering her, kept bothering her. After some time, when the trouble became too much for her, she said, let me tell this man the truth so that the man will leave me. One day, again, when, the man, when the brother came, she said, look, my brother, I can't marry anybody. There is no womb. No womb. The brother said, God did not tell me whether there is a womb or no womb. God just said, that's your wife. So they dragged themselves to the ministers. And the wedding was conducted for them. Bottom line was that the pregnancy of this sister and the baby she delivered was what converted the surgeon who did the operation. Because he just could not believe it. Because I removed this thing. 
Which which womb did she deliver? How can she get pregnant? It's not possible. That's the unusual God. I prophesy upon somebody here. The unusual God will arise for you. It will arise for you. It will arise for you. It will arise for you. In the name of Jesus. This same unusual God has brought down fire from heaven before. This same unusual God, he has sent heavy rain from heaven before. He has sent whirlwind from heaven before. The same God had sent bread from heaven before. This same God, from rock, he had brought water out before. This same God, he had converted wood to snake and snake back to wood. This same God, from darkness he made light and from dust he made man. This same God buried Korah, Datan, Abiram alive. This same God poured fire on Elijah's altar. This same God with that the hands of Jeroboam that he was pointing to his prophet. This same God turned Nebuchadnezzar to a lunatic. This same God. His power is awesome. His power is unusual. This same God has done so much wonders that you open your mouth in amazement. He was at a meeting some years back. I'd never seen that kind of thing before. They brought the man to the meeting. He was paralyzed. And that was a word. That there is something in somebody now that is coming out. All eyes were closed. And prayer started. As prayer started, this man felt that something was coming out of his head. He held it. Because the preacher said, don't open your eyes. He didn't open his eyes. He kept pulling it. Kept pulling it. Kept pulling it. Until he pulled out something like a ruler. The ruler was as tall as himself. What kind of wickedness is this? How can somebody plant a stick inside somebody? Immediately he pulled it out. He jumped out from his paralysis. The Lord is going to carry out a surgery on somebody here today. And the pain and the trouble you have been going through, you shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. It was at this same prayer in some years back that a 54 year old woman stood there crying that day with a baby. 54. The husband ran away. They've given up on her. And when she conceived, the doctors called it malaria fever. It was not malaria fever. It was the unusual God in operation. This unusual God walked three men into the fiery furnace. And that man that had no eyes, he made fresh eyeballs with clay and put it back. This same God, which is unusual power. He was the one that put those dreams into the head of Joseph. He was the one that changed the name of Jacob to Israel. This same God. Somewhere in this country, the people who were VIPs and occultic, they used to go into a forest to gather Virtues. God raised a small boy. The boy was below 20. God wanted to disgrace all these occultic powers. Raise the small boy. I said, rise up. Go into the social forest. I want to show you something there. There's plenty of occultism, plenty of powers of darkness going on, going about. When I was a scientist and we went to, I think we were driving through Abba. Uh, plenty of people lying by the bank of a river. They were lying down there. They, 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 they are alive. Just lying down there. Plenty of men dressed, well dressed. So I was asking the driver, where are these people? By this river. Oga. Then they wait for mommy water. So they are waiting for mommy water. And I asked the driver, do they see the mommy water? So Oga, I don't know. <laughs> For men to go to those kind of places. Lying down waiting for mommy water by the bank of the river. High level of occultism going on. God raised up this small boy. He said, go there. He woke up. 2 a.m. Went to this forest. To his amazement, he found plenty of big cars there. Men gathered around. So he followed. He followed. He was going. He went. When he got there, he found all of them. Worshipping before a woman whose two breasts were touching the ground. 
and the woman had a walking stick. Immediately the man, the brother showed up. The woman said, what an insult. Why did you come here to do my kingdom? The brother said, shut up! In the name of Jesus. And the Lord said, speak to that walking stick. He spoke. The walking stick caught fire. The, the big men they started to run and scatter. I pray that all those gathered in the forest against you, gathered anyone against you, your unusual God shall scatter them. In the name of Jesus. What do you need this morning? You need to make that God your friend. That's the first thing. The second thing you need to do is to call upon him. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. And thou shall glorify my name. But you must call upon him with faith in your heart. Believing that he can do the impossible. The doctors may say something else. Lawyers may say something else. The economy can say something else. Even the government can say something else. But when the unusual God comes into the battle, that is the end of the battle. Rise up on your feet now. Rise up on your feet now. Something is going to happen here this morning. But I want you to join your feet with mine. Right there where you are. And believe God for a fantastic breakthrough. Rise up on your feet, all eyes closed. But you see, if you are here, and God is still not your friend, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, don't waste time. Because we want to go and pray. We don't have time to waste. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want God to move in my life. I'm only going to count 10 here. If you know you want to surrender your life to your wrong quickly to this place before I stop counting 10. Once you don't get here, I know that you are not ready for today because you want to go and pray. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold up. Jesus is waiting for you here. Seven, eight, nine. Keep coming, keep coming. Just a few at the front, I congratulate you. Just bow down your heads and see what I'm going to say after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. I thank you for your grace upon their lives. I pray, O oh Lord, that the decision they've taken today will be permanent in their life. That the hand of God will be upon you for good. And Lord shall continue to uphold you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Open your eyes and look at me here. You've taken the most important decision in life. Look at the past over there. Just follow him for a few minutes and join us. God bless you as you do so. The rest of us, let's remain standing on our feet. And the first thing I'd like you to do is so repent before the Lord. Repent before Him.
Say, so, Father, any sin in my life that will make heaven to run away from me now, forgive me, O oh Lord. Do so now. Do so. Amen. Now, with faith in your heart, I'm believing the God of breakthrough. And you join your faith with mine. If you do that, several things are going to happen here just now. Miracles that will surprise doctors. Things like issues of blood, plantation of the enemy will be completely evacuated. Bodies needing new organs new organs, new set of eyes, new set of womb the hand of God will arise and begin to do so doors that have been strangely closed, this prayer that connects heaven will change the situation lumps in the blessed will vanish and the spirit that drains profit shall vanish not only that as many people as who call upon the Lord here, they shall experience the breakthrough power of Jehovah. Now with a voice louder than anyone around you, louder than anyone around you, you are going to call on God. And you will call upon the unusual God like this. Oh God, Allah! Is that the loudest you can shout it? Your name, ja. Can you shout it loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can see? Shout out! Appear in my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray like that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Basata Karabosanda. Jesus' name we pray. That's the first prayer. Second one. Oh God that doeth hard things. Aha. Uh-huh. Can I hear the sisters shouting that? Is that the ladder the sisters can shout it? Brothers, let your voice be loud. Everybody should get it up. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray like that. The God that doeth hard things. The God that doeth hard things. Yes. Receive your miracle. Receive it. Receive your deliverance. Receive it. 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 Up 
to your mouth, jump to your mouth. Aha! Aha! In Jesus' name we pray. This is prayer number three. I wish you could see what is happening now. I told you. Oh God of possibility. Appear. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray you this serpent strong man you cannot stay anymore I bind you and I cast you out in the name of Jesus you the spirit of infirmity you spirit of bad luck, I bind you and I cast you out. I bind you and I cast you out. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your deliverance. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your deliverance. Receive your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Oh God that divided the Red Sea. I am here. Up here. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and call upon you. In Jesus name we pray. Let us share the grace and fellowship, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Seven miracles singing, hallelujah.